Cool. Um, going to be talking about uh, Tixi today, kind of uh, give a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of kind of uh, how to, but also uh, kind of take take a little bit of a larger larger look at Tixi as well. So it's also I've heard referred to as uh, uh, Tix. So this was developed by uh, Till Tantau. So thanks so much <laughs> to uh, him for all of his great work. Obviously, uh, he's done a lot done a lot more with uh, with, with Beamer as, uh, uh, as well. Uh, it's a uh, macro package for creating for creating cool. graphics. Some of the syntax, if uh, you've worked with uh, Metaphon or PX Tricks, it's somewhat similar, though it's kind of inspired by. It's not uh, uh, definitely not everything is uh, is taken from there, but uh, get to see some of that. Uh, the really nice thing is it's capable of producing wonderful uh, looking graphics, uh, production quality, uh, publication quality graphics. And uh, what we kind of want to show is that uh, uh, today the Tixi is very much, uh, you know, kind of uh, alive and well, and, and many other programs are, and LaTeX packages are starting to uh, to take advantage of the uh, of the power that's provided by uh, by Tixi. So we kind of want to take a look at some of that. So this is kind of a high level overview of what we're going to be uh, talking about uh, today. We're going to look a little bit about uh, kind of a little bit of a tutorial for. You know, kind of what uh, you know the pure Tixi is. The kind of the, the uh, look a little bit of the basics, the uh, the syntax uh, of the uh, of the, of the language itself. Take a look at the math engine, uh, some of the some of the features there that are available. Uh, also look at the very, some of the various ways that we can produce output. We're going to be primarily focusing on PDFs, and then we'll look at some of the other libraries that uh, that come with uh, Tixi for producing some specialized graphs. In particular, uh, showing various. Uh, Automata, also mind maps, which is this. This would be an example of, and then we'll take a look at uh, a brief look at the folding folding uh, library as well. And then there's some other packages uh, that uh, can produce some very nice uh, graphs, combinatorial graphs, and uh, uh, and this nice uh, 2D package which sits on uh, sits on top of it as well, uh, along with some other programs that uh, that are now interfacing with uh, with Tixi as well. Let me take a look at that. So first off, kind of the bare bones uh, document, really nothing. Uh, Terribly surprising here. Use package Tixi. Uh, you can include some optional libraries if you want that uh, that come with the uh, the installation of Tixi. Uh, snakes and uh, arrows and the uh, and the like. And then inside of your document, whenever you want to uh, to, to include a, a graphic, you just do a begin Tixi uh, start a Tixi picture environment. And then inside of there, you'll put uh, put all of your uh, uh, Tixi macros. One of the first things need to be able to do is just to find a point and you can refer to them either in Cartesian form or, uh, or polar form and here this creates a name point that you can then refer to later so you can just define some coordinate, uh, give it a name, in this case we're calling it, calling it P and we say that it's uh, at a, either a Cartesian location or, or a polar location we have a few examples of this as well uh, you can uh, essentially accept the default uh, default units which is uh, starts off at one centimeter or you can change those, or you can also include your own uh, dimensional units so that you can uh, essentially uh, precisely define uh, the location that you're, that you're interested in. So coordinates can be given in lots of, lots of different ways, either explicitly, just kind of saying I want to be at position 3-1, uh, or they can be a, uh, referred to as a named coordinate, where you have something that you've already given a name, you can calculate it using some math, uh, or there are also some other, uh, other ways that you can create them. Then when you want to draw your graphics, what you do is you just chain these coordinates together with a variety of path options, uh, path operations, sorry. In this case, uh, we're going to take a look at the path operation that consists of just uh, uh, two, two hyphens, which represents a straight line. So here we're just drawing this diamond starting off at, uh, uh, starting off at position one, zero, going around to the, uh, to the other uh, vertices. And then a uh, cycle is just a, uh, uh, is a special coordinate, which just refers to wherever you began this, uh, this particular path at. So we just start with the path going, going along to the uh, uh, and, and uh, drawing, uh, drawing in this case straight lines as we go. You can also specify various options along uh, for, for your path. So if you want to include color, or in this case we're telling it that we want to actually fill, so it's going to cause the interior of that polygon to uh, to be to be filled. In this case, we're specifying the uh, the, the color as you would with uh, uh, just as normal with x x color. You can also specify the draw color, which is the pin itself. Uh, line width, opacity, you have a variety of options that can be given to customize the, uh, the look of your, uh, uh, of your graphic. You just specify them as, as you would uh, normally. There are many other operations that are available for drawing grids, rectangles, circles, ellipses, arcs, uh, Bezier curves, and so on. So you have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, kind of graphics primitives that, that are available to you, all of which have a very similar 
a similar format. So we just say that we want to draw, we then describe a path of, uh, of coordinates, in this case they're all explicit, uh, coordinates and we separate have them separated by by the various uh, uh, path operations in this case for uh, for what we want to uh, to have appear. In this case, we're going to see so get to see the picture, but now we want to say, okay, well, how do we actually actually do this? So first off, there's a lot of there's a lot of code here, but uh, what we want to focus focus in on is that we can uh, describe coordinates, give them names, and then we can also do a little bit of computation here. So first, just to find the origin, so just give uh, uh, to give that a name. We also have uh, some other coordinates, in this case a through a through g, which are just defined through these uh, uh, defined through these calculations to uh, to just give us the various uh, uh, points on this uh, uh, on this polygon using uh, using polar coordinates, and then we just draw the edges as we uh, as we've seen seen before, just a going to b going to c and so on to give us the uh, uh, to give us the the outline, and then we add in the spokes. And one of the things just to show is that you can kind of pick up the pin here. Oh, thank you. Kind of pointing, uh, so you can pick up the you can pick up the pin here. Uh, so we're going from the origin to A, and then from A back to the origin. But since there's no uh, path operation here, you can just imagine that we're just moving to that location without actually uh, without actually drawing anything. So that gives us our various spokes, all the spokes along this uh, uh, this polygon. Uh, another way that we could have drawn this the same figure just to kind of expose uh, the uh, the iteration mechanism that that Tixie uh, uh, provides, so get get a little bit of looping, uh, is uh, this for each macro. One of the things that's nice is that uh, this macro uh, can be used outside of uh, uh, Tixie picture environments. They can be used standalone. You don't even have to uh, uh, to, uh, to to include the entire Tixie package if uh, package if you uh, just want uh, this this iteration feature. So. It's Provides another way of uh, of doing iteration in uh, in tech, uh, but here we're just going to have for uh, for each uh, each i going from zero zero to six, we're going to uh, to draw essentially kind of this this seven. So we're going to go out from the origin uh, up to uh, to one of these vertices and then then over. One of the things to notice in this uh, calculation now that I've got parentheses inside of here, uh, I have to include uh, these curly braces. And that essentially uh, prevents, uh, otherwise uh, it'll think that this is a coordinate. And so uh, we want to essentially uh, indicate that we're doing some math here, so we just include that inside of the, uh, the curly braces. Uh, nodes are just coordinates that happen to have both text and shape. So coordinates by themselves, they could have uh, either of these nodes give us a way to, to essentially uh, uh, create a location that has, uh, that has a text and shape at the same time. And so here we're just going to define a node, give it a name, call it, call it V0, say where it's at. In this case, the draw option tells us that we actually want it to be drawn so that we, uh, we get the uh, shape to appear. And we can also say what circle or what, uh, what shape we want, in this case circle. And then we have whatever text that we want. So we're just going to typeset in math mode and put uh, V underscore uh, zero there. And then we could get the rest of, uh, uh, the rest of these, uh, uh, the rest of these uh, locations in a very similar way. You can also use styles to essentially, uh, uh, to essentially uh, make it so that you don't have to type in these options every single time. So for all of our nodes, we're going to say that we want them to be drawn and that we want their shape to be that of, to be that of a circle. Now we don't have to specify, specify those options for the, individual, uh, for, the in, uh, for the individual nodes when we're making them. Uh, also so we can now refer to these nodes just like coordinates, just by name. Say we want to draw lines in between, uh, in between each of them. And you can see that uh, uh, Tixie essentially takes us to the uh, uh, doesn't uh, go inside uh, inside that node, uh, so it uh, essentially understands that uh, that is to stop on the stop on the outside. Uh, the math engine is uh, uh, is reasonably sophisticated, and there's a, there's an R operator that uh, can be used to specify angles and radians if you don't like to uh, to work in degrees. Uh, the arithmetic, which we've already seen, can be used to define points. Uh, we can actually do some point computation, so points can be computed in terms of uh, in terms of other coordinates as well. Uh, there's also a rich collection of functions that are that are available to us, and more functions functions are being uh, are being added with uh, with later versions uh, and so on. And one of the other things that's nice is that uh, just like the uh, iteration uh, mechanism, uh, the math engine can be used standalone, so it can be used outside of uh, uh, Tixie as well if uh, you're interested in doing some uh, some computations. Uh, intact as well, so it's reason, uh, reasonably uh, uh, nice to uh, nice to work with. Uh, you have your basic uh, arithmetic 
uh, operations. You also have some relational operators and uh, also many other functions are provided, computing maximums and square, square roots and, uh, uh, and so on, which can be, can be useful for, uh, uh, for creating computed uh, graphics or you want to essentially perhaps have a family of, uh, of, uh, of curves or, uh, or other pictures that you want to, uh, want to present with or calculate it each time. Uh, a simple little example. We've already we've already seen a few where we're just using some uh, some arithmetic uh, coordinates. Could also be we could also use our math functions. Uh, so here we're just going to define this length using uh, the square root of three. And again, since we have uh, parentheses inside here, we have to uh, to put the curly braces uh, around it so that it understands what we're talking about is uh, mathematics and not trying to refer to uh, to another coordinate that happens to be named three. So the basic calculations uh, involving coordinates can also be performed. Uh, however, to do this, you need to include the Tixi library called calc. And anytime you're doing a coordinate calculation, you enclose them within the dollar sign. So kind of like uh, putting it into math mode, uh, if you will. But where in this case, we're talking about doing a, uh, doing a computation. So you can do addition, subtraction, scaling of coordinates, among, uh, among other things. So here's a simple simple example. We're just going to create a coordinate here called uh, called A. Happens to be at a uh, particular location. Put a dot there. Just fill, fill a little circle, and then we're going to create some other circles. So now that we've uh, inside of this coordinate, we're uh, putting the dollar signs to indicate that we're doing a coordinate calculation, and then we just do two times uh, two times A. And so that's going to uh, to simply do a scalar multiplication. Then you could also add and subtract other coordinates, and these could have been named coordinates, or in this case, just uh, given explicitly, saying saying where we're at, so that we can do a little tra translation here, uh, here as well. Another type of coordinate calculation that you can do is to essentially uh, find a uh, find a point along a line that uh, that connects to uh, uh, two other coordinates. So here we're just going to define a new coordinate called a prime, and it happens to be 50% of the way between b and c. So this gives us a way to calculate calculate a midpoint. Uh, and so we can calculate all of our midpoints here. And, and nothing says that we have to stay within, uh, within this segment, so we could have specified you know, uh, 110% or something like that to, uh, to go out uh, based, on, uh, uh, based on the vector that connects, uh, connects B to C and so on. So this gives a nice way to calculate, uh, to calculate midpoints and things of that nature. We also have a path operation called, called let, and at first glance this, uh, this seems to be a little uh, uh, not terribly useful, uh, but what let allows us to do is to define a coordinate that's used essentially for just one path. So it's kind of a temporary, uh, temporary uh, uh, coordinate, uh, kind of a throwaway coordinate. So what we're going to do is say that we're going to uh, draw on this path where we let P1 be this point, P2 be this point, P3, and, and so on. Now the P's in this case are actually, that's required. The, the naming strategy one, two, and three, we could actually use anything there. Uh, but our, uh, the macro that we use to define these points has to begin with a p, and then we can use them. Uh, then we can use them in the uh, uh, just as we just as we would as a, as a coordinate. Where this really kind of shines is uh, when we want to do some uh, some calculations. So uh, the uh, let syntax allows us to extract the x and y components of a, of a uh, uh, of a vector, and it seems to be the uh, the easiest way to uh, to do so without. Having to descend down to the uh, to the lower lower level of, uh, of PG, PGF. So here we're going to define some coordinates A and B. Just pick some kind of random values, draw the line that connects them. But now we want to draw the circle that goes around them. There are technically a few ways that we could do this, but one way would be to uh, uh, to actually find out well, what's the distance between the between those points. To do that, there's a, a math function called vector length, which just gives me the length of a particular vector. Uh, but I want the length. Uh, I want the length of uh, uh, of this vector here. So to do so, I need the uh, uh, I need the the difference of the two. So we're going to draw starting from a, but here we're going to let p1 be equal to just the difference of uh, uh, of uh, b uh, b and a, so so that we can get uh, get our vector here. So we're just doing a coordinate calculation. Now inside of uh, this vector length, we can refer to x uh, x1 and y1. And it's going to use, since the ones match, essentially, we get the x-coordinate of P1 and the y-coordinate of, uh, of P1. So again, the, uh, uh, we don't get to choose what, uh, what those macros are named. They, they start with x and then follow whatever the numbering convention is that we, we use for our let. So Tixi can also find intersections and, uh, in some cases. So it can find intersections between two lines. 
uh, mm -hmm. circles, a uh, circle and a line, and also two circles. You can also find uh, find tangents. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to use the uh, find the intersection. So here we're going to find a new coordinate d that happens to occur at this intersection. So this is kind of another type of uh, coordinate uh, computation that you could do. So we're going to take uh, the intersection of a to a prime and c to c prime, and they intersect here. We're going to give that a name called d, and then uh, and then obviously we we draw that. Okay. Now Bill's going to talk about some of the other. So we, <coughs> we haven't talked too much yet about uh, production of, of these uh, graphics. And the simplest way to do it is to simply uh, create a TXE picture environment, as, as we mentioned before, and just embed it within text. And it gets typeset much like a uh, mathematical formula would. Uh, as you can see here. Um, another possibility is, uh, well of course you can put it in figures and, and, and whatnot, but an another possibility that you might want to uh, end up with is uh, an entire collection of PDF files, one, one PDF file per image. Um, so one way to do this uh, relies on uh, another package, which you might already know about, the preview package. And so what we can do is essentially just process out the original source file, which has all of your graphic images uh, mm -hmm. with, um, mm -hmm. created with Tixi, process with PDF LaTeX, and by virtue of the preview package, what you end up with is a PDF file of uh, cropped images, one per page. And then you can take that file and burst that into uh, separate files in any of a number of ways. One, one way that, that we found was this uh, PDF toolkit uh, program. So if you haven't seen the preview package uh, before, here's basically what you need to know about it. Uh, so use package, preview, and there are some special options that are, uh, are needed. One of which is the tight page, which emphasizes that you you're want to crop the, each image as tightly as possible. If you don't like tightly cropped images, and you may not because it might be just a little bit too tight for, for your uh, needs, uh, one thing that you can do is you can adjust that. So you can, in this case, add two points of white space around uh, the four edges. And then you indicate what kinds of things you're trying to uh, preview, which in, in our case we want uh, all of the Tixi picture environment uh, to, to be produced. And so, uh, the first picture, the second picture, and so on. <coughs> and then uh, another thing that you might want to do, and if you read the 560 pages of the uh, Tixie manual carefully, you'll see that uh, <laughs> it says that it's possible to produce SVG uh, output from Tixie directly. And if you read more carefully, uh, you'll see that the author admits that, well, it's not quite perfect. And in fact, if you try it, you'll see that it's, it's far from perfect. And, <laughs> and really, it's, it's uh, not ready for prime time, I think is the way they say that. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, you know, if you're trying to get uh, reliable SVG, that this might be one way to go. Uh, so basically do everything I said before, and then uh, a final post-processing step, taking each one of those uh, PDF images and sending it through this PDF to SVG filter. Um, the last time we talked about uh, Tixi, uh, I created a, a finite state machine with raw Tixi code, and it was very painful. And I did a three-state machine, and uh, I basically decided that I didn't want to do any more. <laughs> uh, since that time, there's uh, a new way to do this, which uh, makes it much more understandable to people who are in the business of thinking about finite state machines. <laughs> and so, for example, here are the kinds of things that, that you need to, to know. So for each state, you basically need to know, where do I want to put this on the paper? Uh, what text should appear within uh, each state. Uh, and then if you notice that uh, in this example, there's one state that's special. It's the initial state or the start state. Um, you can have uh, some number of states. In this case, I only have one, which are 
a special final state, so you need to know about those. And then uh, uh, for each edge, where does it start, where does it end? And then there's extra little issues that most people don't think about when they think about state machines. So here, for example, uh, do I want it to curve or just be straight? And if it is curved or, or not, uh, which side of the, the uh, line do I want to be on? And so, for example, if you always think of just going down a one-way street, you'll notice that if I go down this edge, the label is on my left side. And if I go from Q3 to Q0, the label would be on my right-hand side. Uh, so there's those sorts of things, again, that we don't normally think of, but that you would want to think of for typesetting purposes. Uh, so all of those six questions are basically buried in here, and I don't want to belabor the, the, the details, but it, I'd like to say it makes a lot of sense to, to people that think about finite state machines. Here's a node. It's a start state. Uh, it's a state, rather. It's an initial state. Um, and here's what I want inside. And here's another node that's going to be a, a, an accepting or final state. Here's what's inside. I'm also saying in here, <laughs> relatively speaking, if you think of laying this out on a grid, uh, each node or each vertex is positioned relative to where others uh, uh, <coughs> happen to be. And then uh, to get the edges, uh, I'll just pick out a couple of things here. Notice that uh, here. Uh, from Q2 to Q3, it, it says swap. And that issue of swapping is, is again, right-hand or left-hand uh, positioning of the label. Uh, there's also, uh, let's see, from Q0 to Q0, from Q0 to Q0, so there's a loop node. And then where do you want the loop? Notice that some loops are above, some are, are below. Well, if you have one of these to look at and you have 10 finite state machines to, to generate, I think uh, with three minutes of, of careful copying and pasting, uh, <laughs> a person can do this. You don't have to be a Tixie expert. Uh, here's uh, another, so that what we're just talking about is an example of one of the libraries, and there are many such libraries. We've, we've chosen three for today. So the automata is one kind of library. Here's another kind of library, the mind map. I will warn you, uh, the next slide has a lot of code, so uh, <laughs> don't, don't look too hard. But I just want to give you a, just sort of a general sense. Uh, I don't know much about mind maps. But I, I look on the internet, there's, there's lots of companies that <coughs> make this mind map software. And everything I looked at looked really complicated. What I think of when I see these kinds of so-called mind maps are basically just tree structure or, or hi hierarchical structures. So you've got a root node and three children. Uh, each children, each child in turn uh, can have an opportunity to have additional children as, as you see here. So that hierarchical structure, as, as you might guess on the next slide, is going to appear in a hierarchical form. So I've got one root node, that's a bicycle, and then you can see that it's got one, two, three child uh, nodes. And there's some extra information here because like the finite state automaton, there's, we want to provide information about where things land on the page. So for example, grow equals zero, grow equals 60, grow equals 120. So they're just starting from the usual 10th grade geometry, uh, going counterclockwise, zero, 60, and, and 90 degrees. And similarly, when you get to the road bicycle node, um, its two children are also growing uh, in this case from negative 30 for the first and positive 30 for the second. There are many other options that uh, you can use to make this a little bit more automated, um, but this gives you sort of a uh, preview of some of the capabilities. Just for fun, um, there's a, a folding library that's part of Pixie. So, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, uh, this may be the, the the first talk that has homework. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a homework assignment coming later, so just to prepare you. Uh, requires scissors and, and, and manual dexterity and a little bit of uh, scotch tape or, or sticky glue. Um, anyway, let's just take a quick look at the code. Uh, it comes from the folding library, and 
you get to specify how long you want each uh, edge of, of the uh, solid. And then you get to specify what goes in each of the uh, 12 faces. And in this case, it's a rather boring choice, 1 through 12. <laughs> but you could make those 1 through 12 anything else that you can imagine uh, typesetting with text. So if you want to put, I don't know, a calendar, or in this case, oh, I don't know, graphics from generated from TICD, um, <laughs> you can do that. Now, there are lots of other people getting involved, which I think is a very positive sign. Um, so there's something called circuit TICSI. Um, and I think this is very much following the, the pattern of, of PS tricks, where uh, other people get involved and extend uh, the basic capabilities. Uh, so um, like TICSI, uh, we're going to get PDF, and you can embed that with other text. Uh, this is essentially used for electrical circuits. Um, next page. So here are some of the, the kinds of uh, symbols that you can get from this package. And they're essentially just uh, special kinds of nodes that we're going to put along other paths. So uh, here's a simple example. Um, Wikipedia is just uh, attending a tagging along with my wife at the ALA uh, convention recently, and uh, Wikipedia gets a lot of derision among librarians, but uh, <laughs> I went to Wikipedia and I said, show me an RLC circuit, and this is what I got, and so then I thought, well, how can I do this with, with Tixie and with circuit Tixie? And again, uh, not belaboring each and every point, what you can see, for example, is here, draw 6.4 to 6.0, well, if you count carefully, this is 6.4, this is 6.0, so it's going to draw an edge there. Uh, but then along the way, it's going to put a capacitor. And in this case, I chose this because this is what was on the Wikipedia page. But if you wanted to put something other than C here, it would go to the, on the right-hand side of this uh, uh, option here. Uh, star dash star gives you the, the, the little dot, uh, the electrical connections here. So what we see here is we're moving away from the the lower level TICSI details. You're not saying uh, put a two-point filled circle uh, at this particular place. It just, it just knows that and, and does it. Um, and in a similar way, a TICSI graph, another person comes along and says, well, I like the basic capabilities of TICSI, but I want to think about typesetting combinatorial graphs, and I don't necessarily want to go dive down to the TICSI uh, uh, level. Um, there's another uh, companion package, Tixi Burge, which is named after the uh, graph theorist. And so there are lots of uh, well-known graphs like hypercubes and so forth. And you basically just say, I want this, and you, there's some extra parameters, and you can generate all of these fancy looking uh, uh, diagrams. So let's take a look at some simple examples. So I've just chosen a uh, a five vertex graph, and it's, I think everyone would agree, this is basically the same picture, uh, just uh, stylized in a slightly different way. Uh, what's nice about this package is you specify the graph once, and then if you change the style, uh, you get a different, some people like this, this shaded, <coughs> shaded, can we go back just for a second? Some people like this sort of shaded ball sort of thing. Well, that's not my style, but you know, who's to say? Well, it's not for me to say. Uh, but anyway, just one simple change will, almost one simple change will get you from, from one style to another. I say almost because when you switch from here to here, there's this extra complication. Where do you want the labels to appear? OK, so let's look at the details. And again, I'm, I'm only giving just a thumbnail sketch of what's possible. There are lots of shortcuts to make these kinds of pictures uh, require a little bit less code than what I'm saying. So I've taken a very simple approach. I'm just going to imagine a, a Cartesian coordinate system, and I'm going to plant each of these five vertices at places I specifically want. If you want a grid-based system, uh, that's possible too. If you want your vertices arranged in a circle, uh, all of these sort of shortcuts. So you plant the vertices and then specify the edges. What could be simpler? And then you initialize the system and you indicate what kind of picture do I want? And I want just the old boring normal 
uh, picture that I get here. If you change that to classic, then you get this. As I said before, you do have to change a little bit because you have to uh, either just accept what, where the labels land, which was probably a bad thing to do because the D will probably land on the line if you choose the default. So you get this label position, and again, you can thank your 10th grade geometry teacher. <laughs> so you've got, uh, you know, there's the, the uh, 360 degrees around, uh, around each point, and there you go. What if you want directed graphs? So I want uh, arrowheads, possibly weights on each edge. Uh, this wouldn't be my style, but, but <laughs> maybe somebody wants it. Maybe you just want to put the dress up each uh, edge weight in, a, in some special way. Uh, so what has to change? Not too much. You provide a, a post-processing step. <coughs> so the post-processing step basically says, put an arrow. So now I want an edge from A to B, and the arrowhead appears automatically. Uh, you can change the style of those arrowheads if you don't like that particular look. There's, there's about 18 different arrowheads in, in Pixie. Um, what if you want edge weights? Not a big deal. Just add an extra option to each edge indicating what, what the label is. And if you don't like integer weights, well, you notice that this is mathematical text, so that could be anything you want. If you like, I don't know, integrals on your, on your edge weights, have at it. Um, here I just, uh, I didn't create these myself, but there's, there's a quite a large gallery of, of, of these named gra graphs. This, uh, some, everything I've shown you up until this slide uh, had straight edges, but that, as you can see, it is not a requirement. Um, same gentleman produced a, a 2D package. This is very, very nice, I think. Um, if you're interested in drawing uh, pictures that can be thought of in two dimensions. Um, and again, it, it's moving away from uh, the Pixie syntax to a syntax which I think is, is more natural to lots of people. Um, there are some a uh, little bit uh, unusual things about <laughs> this. Uh, so for example, if you've been doing lots of Pixie, you'll notice that every statement ends with a semicolon. Not true here, you don't need them. Uh, fortunately, if, you, if you're if you used to typing the semicolon, it seems to not matter, so put them in, not put them in. Uh, you can also blend straight Tixie with Tixie 2D. Looks a little weird because, it's, uh, as you'll see, the syntax is a little <laughs> different, but you can you can do it. Um, the one thing that I think is, is a little unpleasant is that a spaces should not be used to separate parameters, and if you do, uh, have a space, uh, bad things will happen, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> including possibly putting tech into an infinite loop. Uh, okay, so here's a quick example of, of, of Pixie 2D output. I think this is originally due to Euclid, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so we're starting with uh, two points, A and B, and we want to construct that equilateral triangle. Uh, so how do we do it? Again, not Tixie, but Tixie 2D. So I'm going to start with uh, a point A at arbitrarily 1, 1, another point B somewhat arbitrarily at 4, 2. I'm indicating where I want the, the text A and B to be positioned. In this case, you can see it's to the left of that point, to the right of that point. Then I'm going to draw a segment. Notice that this is not uh, using the Tixie uh, hyphen hyphen operator anymore. So we just draw that segment. This is, looks a little weird, but you can maybe get used to it. Uh, a slash B, not A comma B. Uh, and then construct two circles. Again, not Tixie uh, syntax, but maybe more natural. I want a circle centered at A, with radius is implied by the second parameter. So the radius is the distance AB, and similarly a circle centered at B. Now this next one, you probably have to look it up in the manual. I want the, these two points, C and D, computed. Uh, so you basically provide the information about the two circles and where you want the intersection points stored. If that's not something I would carry around in my hip pocket, but I could look it up. Uh, and then draw the point that was computed at C, draw another point at D, and then uh, we, what was it we wanted originally? We wanted this <laughs> equilateral triangle. So that's a polyseg. If 
from point A to C to B. A to C to B. Why didn't I go back to, to A? Well, I already had that segment. Okay? Uh, and from there, if you want to uh, make this a little fancier, it's not too hard. So I want to draw this dotted line. That's not a big deal. Draw a segment from C to D. Again, not a comma, but a slash. Style equals dashed. And then if you want to put in this right angle indicator, tick Z right angle, and you specify the three points that define that angle. Again, not at all the tick Z syntax, but I think it's very comfortable to someone who's thinking geometrically. A uh, couple of pictures that we took from the uh, 2D uh, documentation, and then a couple of pictures that we, that we drew on our own. Um, GeoGebra has nothing to do with TIGZ, except one important thing, which is it exports to TIGZ format. Uh, GeoGebra is free. It's, uh, I think, originally intended for uh, high school uh, mathematics, but I think since that time, the original uh, intent has it's, it's gone beyond the original intent. It's an example of a dynamic geometry program, if that means anything. But basically, uh, you can draw things and slide points around, and, and all of the relationships are preserved. So I won't, I don't have time to show you that in action, but here it is, just as a, a screenshot. Uh, so I started with just as before, two points A and B. I, using the menus, I constructed the two circles, and <laughs> I put in the points, and then uh, you can't see it from up here, but there's a way to export this. You export to TIXI format. Now you don't need to know anything about TIXI. You just take the, the output that it produced, put it into your LaTeX file, and boom, there you get it. There's another option that says export into Beamer format. You don't have to know anything about TIXI. You do have to know a little bit about Beamer. And what you get then is boom, 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 the uh, <laughs> exact actions that, that I did when I was constructing this in GeoGebra. Okay? Um, TIXI, I think, um, is not particularly strong in uh, data visualization, and I think Hill and others recognize that, and I believe that there's, there's work uh, being done to rectify that. Um, one thing I looked at uh, in preparation for this talk was there's a script called MATLAB to TIXI, which the intent is to take MATLAB uh, plots and to produce TIXI code. You can do some things, and I will just say you can do some things, but it's not perfect. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. 3D plots, for example, don't work at the moment, and I believe that's being uh, worked on. So to wrap things up, uh, TIXI, it's a very nice system, I think, if you're interested in producing uh, any kind of picture that you want to blend well with the text. So all of the fonts look right because they're the same font that's used in, in, in the actual document. And I think for most of us, that's, that's what we're very sensitive to, is that things are the right size, they're the right fonts, and, and so on. Um, many outputs uh, are possible, and uh, for my money, uh, PDF is, 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 is where it's at. And so that's one thing that, I guess, attracts me uh, to the system. TIXI is evolving. We talked about the system three years ago. It had a large manual then. It had many capabilities then. It's grown dramatically since then. And what I think, as I said before, what I think is very encouraging is that lots of other people are starting to, to take note of this and make their programs interact with TIXI. And so I think, uh, like, like we saw with those libraries, you can extend the basic. I mean, originally, uh, Till Fancy started with this system you call TGS, which is very low level. And on top of that, he's got Tixi, which for him, I think, is high level, but for my taste, is not high level enough. And then you get these other libraries and these other, these other packages, which I think for, for dedicated kinds of things like automata packages, uh, diagrams, and so forth, uh, make it uh, a lot more easier to use. And I think those, uh, like the package uh, for TIGZ 2D really is very accessible and uh, so it makes doing things with geometric constructions and, uh, and so on uh, a lot easier. You, you can do all, I mean, 
you can do everything in, in, in Tixi itself, but uh, the intersections and so on is a lot, uh, uh, it's, it's fairly, I think, fairly accessible in the way that a lot of people would think about it. So, like I said, here's your homework. Um, <laughs> truth in advertising, when you do your homework, you will not get this size. <laughs> uh, a little bit small. Oh, I made one special that was a little bit bigger, but I, I thought you wouldn't want to carry an 11 by 17 inch piece of paper around with you. <laughs> Thank you.